New York metropolitan area, New York and New Jersey, during January, February, up to the close down, 13,000 flights bringing 2.2 million people. All right? So November, December, you have the outbreak in China, everybody knows. January, February, flights are coming from Europe. People are also coming from China in January until the China closed down. And the flights continue to come from Europe until the Europe shut down. 2.2 million people come to New York and come to New Jersey. Uh, we acted two months after the China outbreak. When you look back, does anyone think the virus was still in China waiting for us to act two months later? We all talk about the global economy and how fast people move and how uh, mobile we are. How can you expect that when you act two months after the outbreak in China, the virus was only in China waiting for us to act? The horse had already left the barn by the time we moved. A researcher now says, knowing the number of flights coming into New York from Italy, it was like watching a horrible train wreck in slow motion. Those are the flights that were coming from Italy and from Europe January and February. We closed the front door with the China travel ban, which was right. Even in retrospect, it was right. But we left the back door open because the virus had left China by the time we did the China travel ban. That's what the researchers are now saying with 28,000 cases in the United States, 10,000 in New York. So what is the lesson? An outbreak anywhere is an outbreak everywhere. When you see in November and December an outbreak in China, just assume the next day, it's in the United States. When they say it's in China, just assume that virus got on a plane that night and flew to New York or flew to Newark Airport, and it's now in New York. That has to be the operating mentality, because you don't know that the virus didn't get on a plane. All you need is one person to get on that plane in China and come to New York. The way this virus transfers, that's all you need. And you can't assume two months later, the virus is still going to be sitting on a park bench in China waiting for you to get there. That is the lesson. And again, why do we need to learn the lesson? Because they're talking about this happening again with this virus, where it could mutate in China and get on a plane and come right back, or the next virus, or the next pandemic. Whose job is it to warn us of these global pandemics? The president says it's the World Health Organization, uh, and that's why he's taking action against them. Not my field, but he's right to ask the question, because this was too little too late and let's find out what happened so it doesn't happen again. Uh, and it will happen again. Bank on it. Let's not uh, put our head in the sand and say this is the only global pandemic that we'll ever have to deal with. In the meantime, let's keep moving forward. One of the things we're working on is how do we clean, how do we disinfect, we're talking about reopening. We still have public transit systems running. We still have buses running. So uh, we've been working on how do you come up with new cleaning, new disinfecting protocols. Uh, and I asked a simple question to our team a few days ago. How long does the virus live? And it's something we need to know. But uh, frankly, I think it's something everybody needs to know. The virus can live up to 72 hours on plastic surfaces and stainless steel surfaces, okay? So just think about this from a transit point of view or from your car point of view. Uh, it can live on a 
vinyl car seat up to 72 hours. It can live on a pole in a bus or on a seat in a bus for up to 72 hours. Up to 24 hours on cardboard, up to four hours on materials like copper. And the droplets can hang in the air for three hours. This was a shocker to me. When they were talking about droplets, I thought it was a droplet and then it falls, right? It's a droplet that can hang in the air for three hours. 